<laughs> okay, guys, now we are going to start with the transmissions. And, and we are going to divide the, the course similar to the course of gasoline. Uh, I'm going to explain the inboard transmission gas and diesel, and Danny will explain the outboard transmission and, and the steam drive transmission. No? Uh, we have a lot of theory. The theory is in the book. In the book, you have uh, the videos. Uh, you have additional videos than uh, the video that you have uh, in the regular uh, episodes of uh, the roadmap. You have other uh, small videos that uh, we did uh, in uh, different marinas, in different uh, places, in different situations. Uh, I hope you enjoy this, uh, uh, this course, the course of uh, transmission. Why do you think that uh, you, need, you need the transmission? Because you have the engine, and uh, in the output on the flywheel, you can connect directly the coupling over there. Why you don't connect the coupling for the chaff and propeller directly on the engine? Why you need the transmission? You destroy the bearings. Okay, one thing is because you destroy the engine. You destroy the bearings. The, you remember the bearings of the engine? How are those bearings? Plain bearings, soft Plain, plain. no? With soft metal. It's, it's easy to destroy those, those bearings. That's number one. Especially when you apply heavy load, those bearings work a lot and you destroy the bearings, no? This is number one. Other, other reason why you need the transmission? Overspeed. You mean? Overspeed. Okay, because you need control speed. No, you need control speed and you need control what other, uh, what other factor? Speed and? Torque. Torque, output torque. Do you remember the manual transmission? This one? This one? What happened in first gear? What happened with the RPMs in first gear? Low, lower, low RPMs. RPMs. Low and the torque? Uh, high. The maximum, no? Because you have a gear ratio, this with a small gear, no? This with this is five to one, three to one, yeah? It's big gear ratio in number one. one. What happened in number two? A little smaller. A little less and a little bigger, no? And you have, what about the RPMs in second one? A little bit higher. And the torque? A little lower. In third? Higher, a little lower. Four. In five? In five is? Is? Is direct. For that reason, in some cars, you see one, two, three, four, and D direct. <laughs> yeah? You understand? We all thought that was drive. It's not, it's not that. I thought it was driving too. It's direct because it's direct. You don't have gear ratio in number five. Good, no? Yes, you need the transmission because you need improve the torque and control the RPMs. That's the main reason, no? Okay. Later we are going to tell what happened, what happened because in the engine, in, excuse me, in, in, in your boat, you have the gear ratio and additional, you have the pitch of the, trans uh, of the propeller. It's another factor that uh, affects the performance of the engine. Okay? Right? It's clear until this point why I need transmission? Okay. Every day are more and more and more popular uh, the electric uh, boats, the hybrid boats. Uh, every day are more and more popular because the prices of the gasoline, the prices of the diesel uh, are going up, up, up every day. And, uh, and other additional factors, no? The, the environment, the pollution, uh, the people want to eliminate those engines, gas and diesel, uh, for electrical. Uh, I think that uh, at the end of the day, in 10 years, probably the population of uh, automotives for, uh, for personal use, for families, uh, will be reduced. Uh, the gasoline and diesel will be converted in electrical for personal use. But uh, for industrial use, for uh, transportation, for heavy heavy equipment, uh, we will continue with diesel engines, especially. Uh, we don't have the, no, because we don't have the technology for the batteries. No, easy uh, additional Danny, it's impossible to reach those huge torques and horsepower produced for uh, internal combustion engines with electrical. Uh, this is a situation that uh, uh, is difficult. It's difficult to 100% shoot, 100% shoot. But uh, the big trucks, the big equipment, 
the heavy equipment will be with gas and diesel engine, especially diesel. Gasoline disappeared with the time, but diesel will continue because diesel produce produce excellent, excellent, excellent torque, and diesel is highly, highly efficient. You remember, in comparison with gasoline. I, I have another other question. In in terms of a, of a, of a troubleshooting, uh, you feel nice in the last laboratory doing the troubleshooting with the with gasoline, no? Following the sensor, following the the the, the fuses, the relays the harness, and uh, you remember in diesel, in diesel is simple, no? Because in diesel, in diesel you, you don't need, you don't need a spark. Uh, the troubleshooting is less complicated, no? For that reason, a lot of people, a lot of people prefer a, a diesel engine for, for a hundred reasons superior to, than gasoline. In the future, you have a, you are the future of this business. In the future, you can design with gasoline, with diesel, with electrical. That's, that's, that's your decision. For that reason, the first part of this class is uh, the conversion. Suppose that I have an, uh, a boat with an, an inboard or outboard, doesn't matter. And uh, I want to replace that inboard or outboard gasoline engine for an electric model. Uh, this is the transmission, no? And, and this is the engine. Can I replace the engine for an electric motor using the same transmission? Yes. Yes. <coughs> yes. Doesn't matter if the transmission is manual transmission or automatic transmission or marine transmission, like this. Yes, I can replace the motor. What is the, the factor that I need I I need evaluate to re, to replace this gasoline or diesel engine for an electric motor? Output torque. The output torque. How much output torque produce the actual engine? If I want to use this transmission, I need other elements that produce the same output torque. Yes or no? Yes. This is the factor. And uh, this is the advantage of the electrical uh, uh, motors, AC or DC. I can find electric motors with an excellent output torque and a not necessary with the same horsepower than the previous gasoline engine. Everybody understand that? Suppose that I have a gasoline engine with a 100 horsepower and a, that engine produced 120 foot-pounds. I need an electric motor of a 100 horsepower to produce 120 foot pounds? Would no. be nice. Probably you need an electric motor with less less power in horsepower. And that mm -hmm. electric motor produces equal or more or double torque than the gasoline engine. Is clear my friends? Ah, this is the, the, the most interesting part. I don't need one hand I not I don't need an electric motor of one hundred horsepower to produce 120 foot pounds. Probably with a, an electric motor half 50 horsepower or 35 or 40, I can I can produce 120 foot pounds. This is magic. Especially in a AC motors, three phase motors, three phase motors. You know what is the main difference in between a single phase AC motor and a three-phase AC motor, you remember? What happened? What happened in the single phase? Suppose that both motors, I have two AC motors, AC, and both of them are 50 horse, uh, horsepower, 50 and 50. This is single phase and this is three-phase. What is the main difference? Both of them, the output horsepower is 50 horsepower. What is the main difference between this one single phase and this one three phase? Less oh, car. Okay, the efficiency. Oh, it's gonna be using less car. Less amps. How much is the consumption of this uh, electric motor single phase? Probably 60 horsepower. And how much is the consumption of this one three phase? 20. Wow. That's. <laughs> What motor is better for your pocket? The three-phase, yeah? In three-phase motor, 
Ah, remember what is the equivalence in I have a, an AC motor three phase and I have an engine three pistons. This is similar, no? Because I have three three pistons in three different angles. You remember the, the crunch up in three different angles? I have three pistons working producing torque. That motor of three phase is equivalent to a motor of three cylinders in an internal combustion engine. When I have three cylinders in different angles of the crunch up, what about the, the, the torque is less? Each piston needs less torque to turn the crunch up. If I have a motor with only one piston, that piston needs too much torque to produce the same RPM and the same output torque than this one. You understand? That's the difference. For that reason, this, this motor needs 50 or 60 amps to turn it, the crunch up. And this one, each piston only need 20. Yeah, that's the, that's the, the difference. It's exactly the same, electrical, with the, with internal combustion engine. Yes, there are AC motor, three-phase motor, with high, high, high efficiency. What about the DC motors? The DC motors uh, uh, for hybrid or electric uh, uh, configuration. Uh, they are recommended or you recommend better an AC motor? AC. AC motor is better. <coughs> what, what is the inconvenience with DC motors? The, the, the DC motors drain the battery bank quickly. No? They don't have as much torque. No, the, the DC motors, they, they have huge torque, but for a short period of time. That's the inconvenience. You remember the bow thruster? Yeah. In that moment that you use the bow thruster, you produce ultra high torque, but uh, for two hours? For a short period of time. No, it's for 30 seconds, no? Yeah. Check the battery bank. Ooh, oh, it's hard. Yeah. Other, yeah, no more, no more bow thruster. You use the bow thruster two, three times, no? Only two? Tuck the boat, and that's it. You need wait 30 minutes until the battery bank is recovered. Yes or no? This is DC. Can you bring a boat from uh, North Carolina to Miami only with DC motor? No, my friend. In the sail? It's impossible. You need other boats with batteries, no? That's, that's clear? Okay, with AC, no. The AC motor runs for hours and hours. The dissipation of heat is better in AC motors in comparison with DC motors. Okay, that's the secret. Yes, I can replace this engine. Doesn't matter if it's gas or diesel for an electric motor. The secret is I need to search a lot to, to identify what is the best motor, AC or DC, the dimension of the motor, the type of bearings on the motor, and also that that motor produced the torque that I needed. That's simple, but yes, you can. My friend, you have the, in this wonderful country, you can buy in Craigslist an abandoned boat for $500 for $600. You remove that stupid engine and you, you can play with electric motors to convert that, that boat in electric. You can, my friends. I wish we had more time. For example, your boat. Yeah, I mean, you just get rid of that Mercury for electric motors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have one boat similar to your boat to convert in electric. And I select the motor, I have the motor selected. It's not expensive, it's time that you need. Sure. It's Only time. 10 grand. <laughs> one important thing. Suppose that I select for my conversion, a uh, DC motor. DC motor, okay. Uh, what type of control is used for the throttle to control the RPMs of that electric motor? Potentiometer. Ah, uh, suppose that I select an AC motor. What type of control <coughs> is used to control the RPMs of the motor? BFD. BFD. Frequency drive. Yeah. Frequency drive is an element that uh, with variable frequency to increase or decrease the RPM of the electric motor. Yeah, it's not a potentiometer. Potentiometer is when you have DC motor. Frequency uh, driver when you have a, a AC motor. 
and that's it. Okay, pay attention. Suppose that I have a boat, in board boat, with two cables. One cable for throttle and other cable for for, uh, Shift. Uh, for the chip, for the drive, for the transmission. And uh, I replace my gasoline engine for an electric model. Okay, the original throttle cable will be connected with my potentiometer. And the original chip cable for the transmission will be connected with the original transmission. I am going to use the same original transmission. And bingo, I have my original boat with the same propeller, the same chop, the same transmission, but now my motor is electric. The same if I have an outboard. I remove the power head of the outboard, I put the electric motor over there, and the throttle cable will be connected with the potentiometer or, or frequency driver for that motor. Danny, have you done this conversion? No, I haven't. I have yet to do it. I want to do it with him when he does his. He's got his boat ready yeah. to start doing it. I've never Listen. done it, so I'd be curious. That's, this is the future. Yeah, I saw some YouTube videos. You know, we have a two, big, two boats for conversion, but we, don't, we, we need time. We have the small boat in my home, the aluminum boat with, with outboard, and we have another, the formula here, mm. with the steam drive. Both of them, but we need time. And uh, a little money. <laughs> time. Yeah, time, that's the, the problem. Uh, this, is the typical, uh, this is the typical configuration. You see the picture? You have the picture in your book. Uh, this is the battery bank, my friends. This is the battery bank. And the battery bank can be charged the battery bank can be charged. That's Raul. Welcome, Raul. Now, the battery bank. The battery bank will be charged with solar or with or with windmill or or with a battery charger. No. Ah, if the battery bank is charged with a battery charger. Ah, it's because the battery charger receives power, AC power from, from the generator. Ah, in this particular situation, this is a hybrid solution. Why hybrid? Why the name hybrid? Ah, because you need, in some situation, the generator. But pay attention. What is the function of the generator in that hybrid solution? To top up the charge. Only recover the level of charge in the battery bank. That's it. The generator is used to turn the propeller? No, 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 no. For that reason, be careful when the people say, I have a hybrid car, I have a hybrid boat. Ah, in this moment, you hear that motor running? Yes, I hear the motor. Oh, that's the generator. In this moment, the wheels in my car receive the power from the generator. No, 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 my friend, no, no, no. Your wheels in your car, your car is hybrid, receive power from electric motors in front of each wheel. That's correct? And those electric motors, AC motors, receive the power from an inverter in the, in the middle of the, of, of the car. And the inverter receives the DC current from the battery bank. That's correct? In this particular case, this boat is DC. But I have another one. I have another one here. This one. Look at this. This is with inverter. This is the solution with AC power. I have the battery bank, I have the inverter, I have the AC motor, and I have the transmission, propeller, and chop. Ah, the motor is AC motor. Oh, the motor use the frequency driver and the throttle control. Good? Because it's AC. Ah, that motor work with AC power constantly. And the, the, the power for that motor is coming from the inverter. And the inverter receives the power from the battery bank. And once again, the battery bank will be charged from solar, <coughs> from wind, or from generator. This is a hybrid solution with AC motor. When I have AC motor, I have inverter. Good? So, to be able to kick the generator on when the batteries are below 
Is it a circuit board and the battery charger that sends it? Or how would you troubleshoot that uh, if it won't turn it's on? It's too simple. Uh, okay, you remember the DOD uh, yeah. in yeah. The, the, the level of charge in a battery bank. When the, when the DOD is 80%, that means that the level of charge in the battery bank decreases 20%, mm -hmm. immediately a, 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 a relay sends a signal and starts the generator. The generator starts until when the, when the level of charge in the battery bank is superior to 95%, the generator stops. So it's just a relay in there? It's, it's a relay, it's too simple. It's too simple. I am going to explain that, that you can do that uh, a circuit board, that wiring is too simple. The only that you need by is the, the DOD, DOD sensor. And a, a typical relay, Bosch 101. And you send the signal to start the generator and also to stop. Ah. Nice, no? That's, you can do that conversion in your boat. I think the hybrid for right now is probably yeah, it's the best, Danny. It's your best bet because you don't need a stop to efficient. charge. Yeah, the battery is not efficient enough to. Uh, I mean, if you, if you just strictly a battery, you can probably give you four hours of use. That's all you're going to be able to use for. No, most people are not going to use it. Yeah, just yeah. Four that's hours. Just, of course, so today the makes there sense. are batteries with high technology. The lithium phosphate batteries, the lithium batteries, the cadmium batteries, excellent batteries. Like like all the time. Like more, more than this. Switch my truck more to a hybrid truck. The lithium, I see the good lithium. Mabru, Mabru have a, a battery driving. similar to the HD, the, the size, the external size, similar, with the, in three in three capacities. The same battery with the um, 100 amps, other one with 125 amps, and other one with 400 amps, uh, the capacity. But the price is bam, bam, bam. It's, uh, one thousand uh, twelve hundred and uh, eighteen hundred, the big, no? Okay, there are in the market every day are more and more sophisticated batteries. That's that's the secret. The problem some years ago was here in okay. the battery bank. Today, that problem is Slowly. is exactly is solved every day more and more. This is the hybrid solution. You can do that solution. You can work on that in the future. I have another other good solution is the the, uh, the parallel series. Let me show to you. What is it? Check the book. In the book, you have all of those explanations. Look at this. Series hybrid electrical with the engine running. Look at this blue section. This blue section is an electric module. Loose like at the back end of a generator. That blue section, when the motor is running, when the motor, when the engine is running, the clutch here is engaged. What is the meaning of that? This with this are connected. <coughs> when the motor is running, the clutch is engaged. Uh, the blue section works like a generator producing AC power and the AC power is used to keep the battery bank fully sure. charged. You understand? When the engine is on. Now let me check when the engine is off. When the engine is off, the clutch is open, disengaged. Then the electric motor works like an electric motor AC. That motor receives the power from the inverter and the inverter from the battery bank. And of course, the electric motor moves the transmission, the coupling, the propeller, and the chaff. Good? This is when the engine is up. When the engine is on, that blue section works like an electric motor. This is a nice, nice, nice uh, design. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, manufacturers uh, are working on that design. This is the hybrid electric, hybrid electric. Uh, good, no? How long does that motor last though by itself? Because there's nothing charging the battery. Right? Right? The, the pen of the battery bank. Is it moving? 
so much as a, is, you know, when the engine is running, uh, using the, because of the when power, the engine is running, it becomes as a generator, right? Correct. Uh, and how much is the losses on that? How much what? Losses on the engine. You know, like, uh, because you, you have to spin extra with the how generator. Much how much power, how much power how, are you losing? Yeah, losing. Yeah. 20%. 20%. 20%. Around 20%. It's always a compromise. Yeah. Yeah, in this particular case, when the engine is running, the clutch is engaged. And at that element, work like a generator. Like a generator, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, producing AC power in order to keep the battery bank fully charged. And the rest is equal. The transmission is working, the coupling, and the propeller, and the chop. The secret is the price of that blue section. That blue section generator motor is expensive. There are other, other hybrid solutions. Look at this. Uh, this is excellent. This is the, the traditional uh, chaff, the coupling. This is the gearbox, the electric motor, AC motor, and the inverter together. That solution is produced for Delco, Delco Marine. Uh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Danny, one packet like this to replace a typical uh, uh, inboard Mercruiser uh, is around 22,000. Doesn't uh, attach anything on the front. That one. Uh, has the uh, the, the, the post sticking out? Oh, that one. What is it? What is that for? Oh no, you can use that one here to connect a row water pump. Uh, any other part? No, it's not used. <coughs> it's free. The other end of the electric motor. You can connect here one uh, hydraulic uh, uh, PTO unit for uh, trim tabs and other hydraulic equipment. This is the course of uh, September. Do you know, do those uh, inverters need to be water-cooled or just air-cooled? Oh, the, uh, the inverter? Yeah. Air-cooled or water-cooled. Today there are inverters, marine inverters, air-cooled or water-cooled. If it's water-cooled, you can install here a raw water pump to cool the inverter. The inverter and the motor, because some, some electric motors for marine application, they are water-cooled. Yeah, they use a, a raw water pump. The raw water pump circulates the, the, the water in a jacket around the housing of the motor to keep the temperature of the motor down. Good? Let me ask you a question. Do they have a sensor in the Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like an uh, yeah, and shoot down the system. Yeah. You, are, you are doctors installing sensors in the future, no? You, okay. How can you install a temperature sensor? Suppose that this motor have a jacket with raw water circulating around the motor and uh, the raw water is coming from, from the raw water pump and you want to install uh, a temperature sensor. Uh, what is the procedure? In any part where the water is circulating, you make a drill and you install a temperature sensor. No? You bolted the temperature sensor. Yeah, you tap it and you put the sensor. And that sensor will be connected that's that uh, 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 temperature switch, not temperature switch sensor. Off. Temperature switch. That temperature switch have two terminals. Those two terminals are connected with the main, the main power for the motor. And uh, when the temperature here pass the limit, open the circuit and the motor stop. No. In the future, you need to install a lot of sensors: temperature sensors, pressure sensors, pressure switches. No. Oil pressure switches. Okay? You are familiarized with that. Remember, the switch interrupts the signal, and the sensor sends the signal for the gauge. Good? 
clear? How, how long do the motors last? Oh, my friend, it's 15 years. As long as you don't sink, sink your water. Yes. <laughs> it's better for it costs more. Okay, it's $25,000, but uh, for 15 years, you don't touch, you don't replace the spark plugs, you don't replace fuel pump, you don't replace raw water pump, you don't... No maintenance. Yes. No maintenance. Zero, practically. It's, it's you get your return in the long term. Until you have a short. With. Good luck. Look at this. That's comparison. You have that that information in your book. That comparison. When the uh, uh, um, comparison between that. This is the, the previous example, no? The inverter on top, the electric motor in the bottom, and the, what is this? This is the frequency driver to control the RPM of the motor. Okay. Look at this. This is the situation electrical with this, and this is the, the, the typical diesel engine. Uh, when the engine is up, uh, the blue section works like an electric AC motor powered by the generator or from the inverter in the in the previous example. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, look at the comparison. 220 hours with this one and only 76 hours with the electric motor. Uh, look at the at the at the the consumption in in in, in gallons. Uh, 0.07 uh, gallons uh, uh, per mile in comparison with 0.6 gallons per mile. It's a it's a big big difference, no? When when you have both of them. Check the book. And, uh, and, uh, and read the explanation that I have in the previous page about that situation. Anybody have the book? Yes. They're talking about for hybrid electric? Yeah. For hybrid electric. Look at this parallel system. Look at this parallel system. This is a traditional diesel engine with a special clutch. It's a clutch pack. Today we are going to talk about the clutch pack. Uh, this is the typical transmission, the marine transmission, uh, the, the, the coupling, the chaff, and the propeller. Suppose that I have an inverter. I have an inverter and I have a battery bank. And uh, I don't want to use the motor. I disconnect the clutch. I disengage the, the clutch, the motor is off, separated, and now I use the electric motor using power from the inverter, and uh, the inverter receives the power from the battery bank, and with the electric motor I move the system. This is a parallel hybrid. This is the typical motor, the typical situation that you have actually in your boat, and you incorporate this electric motor in the gearbox. And the electric motor depends on the inverter and the inverter of the battery bank. Volvo used that design. The only that I want to show in this book, in this course, all of those possibilities is because with all of those, you can combine and produce your own design. There are a lot of designs today, wonderful designs, different integration. Those are the most common, the most popular. You understand that one? The only that you need to introduce here is the clutch. Today I am going to explain what is the meaning of those clutch packs, how those clutch packs work, how those clutch packs engage and disengage. Those clutch packs are hydraulics or electronics with a with a with a electromagnets. Yeah. This is other possibility. That's the situation. Look. The typical transmission, the diesel engine, and here you connect the electric motor. The traditional electric motor. And you can operate the system with no engine and electric motor. Of course, you need the clutch, the clutch here to engage or disengage the engine. You can install any type of clutch, manual clutch, electronic clutch, hydraulic clutch, there are a lot of clutches today. We are going to talk about the clutches right now. Do you have two different throttles? Uh, no. Do you take the same throttle for the electric motor? Yeah. Or for 
if, if the motor is electrical, AC motor, you need to install the frequency driver in the, in the, in the throttle cable. Ah, of course. You have one throttle when, when you operate the, the motor in electrical and other throttle when you operate the system with diesel. Yeah, you have two throttles. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. Good. Any other question about that picture? Um, Mr. Ogos, can you just wondering, is it, do you know the company who does this, uh, uh, the middle section? Yeah. What company? Huh? Yeah. Zero. There are millions Zero. of companies. In internet, you found it a lot. This is the traditional transmission, no? And this is the bracket. Yeah. With the clutch, with the clutch pack. The clutch pack and the and the, the, the possibility to connect the electric motor. This one, you can connect one electric motor AC here and other DC here. And depending on the situation, you can use the AC motor or the DC motor. Nice, no? This is not one motor for one engine and other motor, no. This is one AC or two ACs or two DCs, one the backup of the other one. Check, check the book. transmission automotive, the automatic transmission, uh, before we explain with Danny the marine transmission. Why? Because the marine transmission is a combination of both of them. It's a combination of the manual transmission, it's a combination of uh, the automatic transmission. And, uh, and uh, if you understand those transmission, you understand the marine transmission easy. And we are going to, to try to uh, understand those transmission. Uh, it's nice because in the future uh, you need to know about the marine transmissions. Right? That's okay? Okay. Once again, the function of the transmission is control the RPMs and multiply the start. That's the function of the transmission. For that reason, I need transmission. What is the main difference in between the marine transmission and the automotive transmission? The main, main difference. This is the manual automatic transmission, this is the automatic transmission, and that one is the uh, marine transmission. What is the main difference? So it just combines automatics and... Uh, okay, that's, that's okay. one difference. But uh, the main, main difference is in, in your boat, in, you, in your car, if you have this transmission, how many gear ratios you have in forward? Six. Five or six in forward. In the automatic transmission in your car, how many gear ratios you have in forward? Four or five or six, no? In your boat, how many gear ratios you have? One. In reverse? One. That's it. Ping and ping, that's it. Oh, in forward, the, the, the marine transmission change one, two, three, four, five? No. The marine transmission stay in one gear ratio. Why? For protection. It's for protection. Uh, you remember the propeller? The pitch of the propeller? The angle of the blade? In the majority of the boats, that pitch is constant. Can you modify the pitch during the operation of the boat? No. Why not? For safety. Because if you can modify the pitch, and also if you can select more gear ratios in the transmission, you can destroy the hull or vibration. What happens if the captain have two coronas? Drinking corona. More, more, more gear ratios, and additionally modify the pitch of the propeller and destroy the hull. 
that's, that's, that's the reason. It's for safety. That's okay? It's clear, my friends? Okay, the marine transmission only have one set of gear ratio in forward and other set of gear ratio in reverse. The, manual, the automatic transmissions, they have different set of gear ratios in forward and reverse. Yeah. Yeah, later we are going to talk about that. Okay, guys, that's clear? It's clear yep. that, that situation? Great. Other important difference between the marine transmission and the automotive transmission is the clutch. Pay attention, this is the most difficult part to understand. You remember in your car, when you have this manual transmission, what is the procedure to select one gear or other gear or other gear? You remember what is the procedure? You have to press okay. the clutch. I need, with the clutch, I need isolate the engine from the transmission. When the engine is isolated, what happens? You can, you can change the gear. In your car. Ah, excuse me. In the automatic transmission, Mr. Lopez, I don't have clutch. But that transmission, intelligent transmission, have a clutch. The clutch is hydraulic. And you hear in the automatic transmission, the transmission pass from one to the other one. Internally, the transmission isolate the motor, suddenly engage the other one and engage again, disengage, engage, disengage, engage. The name of the element that engage and disengage is this. This is the clutch, it's a hydraulic clutch. And uh, this one, this is the, 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 the clutch of uh, the automatic transmission. In this transmission, the clutch is this one. Ah, you see what is the difference between the hydraulic clutch and the mechanical clutch? The hydraulic clutch is, is wet, and the mechanical clutch is dry. dry. That's the main difference. A lot of oil internally here. What happened internally over there? I will explain later. That's magic. This is, in my opinion, a robot, a complete robot. The life of the American people changed with the uh, automatic transmission. Not, not only American. This is an American inven invention. After that, the rest of the world produced automatic transmission. But uh, at the beginning, only the American cars, Oldsmobile, Cadillac, invent those automatic transmission. After that, Ford, yeah? And after that, American cars, Jeep, incorporate those transmissions. But, uh, and later, 20 years later, in Europe, uh, Mercedes-Benz and BM start with automatic transmission, but the invention is American. This is, a, in my opinion, the mechanical invention of the previous century. And this is, in my opinion, uh, what was the other invention of the previous century that changed the life of the people? One, in my opinion, the automatic transmission. And the other one? The cell phone. The cell phone. Okay, great. When, when you stall, what is that? Is that the, it's not engaging? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we are going to talk about it. Okay, guys. That's the secret. I need to isolate the engine from the transmission with, 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 clutch. with, clutch. clutch. In your boat, you don't have clutch. The transmission is engaged with the engine all the time. And you introduce the, the gear. <laughs> ah, no, Danny. Some more in the But it's directly with no clutch. You don't have clutch. Ah, you have a, an element that looks like a clutch, but it's not a clutch. It's only an absorber. For when you engage in idle, you remember what is the procedure in marine, in, in boat? You reduce the RPM, no? Ba, 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 and when the RPMs are in the minimum, what is the procedure? You introduce the gear, no? And you hear, <laughs> no? But no clutch. All right, the element that in that moment when you engage the gears, absorb all the momentum is this. 
This is the marine transmission, and you have that element with those uh, springs. In the moment that you engage here, the springs are compressed and return. Bam, 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 bam. Those uh, springs compress and release and absorb the momentum. This is the flex plate. Flex plate. <coughs> we are going to talk later about that. The flex plate is not a clutch. It's not a clutch. It's a momentum absorber. It's not a clutch. That's clear? <laughs>